Welcome to Clutch Kick. I'm Andrew and I'm actually heading out to the Tesla Supercharger in Liberty Lake, Washington uh, in my personal vehicle. It's a 2024 Kia Niro EV. Uh, and the reason I'm doing this is because for the last week or so, I've been running my battery down as low as I can get it uh, in order to test the new Electron Vortex adapter. So this is a NAX, so North American charge standard, also known as the Tesla plug uh, to CCS adapter that allows third-party EVs to charge at the Tesla supercharge stations. In my Kia here, I've been waiting for quite some time for this um, feature set to be activated. Uh, it was supposed to be uh, greenlit at the start of this year, uh, but as of last month, Kia flipped that switch. So now, in theory, uh, all the Kia, the, the Nero EV, EV6, EV9, they're all compatible as long as you have an adapter. Every manufacturer makes their own adapter. Kia has one. Um, but they're pretty expensive, and, and this one uh, by Electron, uh, it retails for uh, significantly less. So I think it runs around $199. Sometimes there's sales that bring it down even lower than that. They were gracious enough to send us a, an adapter to test out, and we're going to give it a go. A couple things I want to check is that the ease of use, you know, how, how easy is it to, to plug in and unplug? And then also, what sort of charge speeds can you expect on this? My Nero, it, it doesn't have the fastest charging to begin with. It caps out at about 83 kilowatts, um, and that's on a you know a standard CCS, and that doesn't matter if you're on a 150 or 350 kilowatt station. The max I can get is 83 kilowatts, uh, and then it'll only go down from there as, as the charge curve levels out. So as long as I can get that same speed using this adapter, I'll be happy. Now, if you have a, a EV6 or an EV9, uh, you know, those, those vehicles can get a lot more juice. Uh, they peak at around, I think, 235 or 250 kilowatts on a 350 kilowatt station. And, and if you're using a Tesla supercharger, you're not gonna get those speeds. Those vehicles are 800 volt architecture and most Tesla stations right now are 400 volt architecture. So just keep that in mind if you're on an EV6 yeah, EV9 or on you know Hyundai uh, Ionic 5, Ionic 6, um, you're just not going to get the same speed charging using an adapter at a Tesla station. It's 87 degrees and climbing. So the other thing I want to test, are there any issues with overheating? We're talking about a lot of juice going through an adapter here on a hot day. Uh, so I just want to make sure, you know, can this thing give me a, a full charge here with no issues with overheating? Um, that's going to be key, especially if you're road tripping and depending on this adapter. Now I'm testing this adapter on a Kia, but it should be compatible with any vehicle that's been approved to work on Tesla superchargers network. Not every CCS vehicle is compatible currently. Uh, both Tesla and the manufacturers have to do some software um, tweaks in order to make a vehicle compatible. Hop over to, to Tesla supercharger site and they list their compatible manufacturers. Kia OEM adapter is $300. And the Hyundai OEM adapter is, I believe, 340. Uh, this one here from Lectron is 185 currently. So it's a great value, especially if it works just as well as the OEM ones, which we'll find out. Here we are. We're pulling up to the Tesla supercharge station right now. Uh, current state of charge is 16%. So I got it nice and low. Uh, as with you know all EVs, your charge curve is going to be um, a lot quicker, the lower state of charge and then it will slow down and taper off as you get higher state of charge. Now, one thing to consider here is these cables on the Tesla stations are very short. So you might have to get creative depending on where your cable, your charge port is. So in my case, it's right on the front of the vehicle. So I'm gonna pull right up to the front here to try to make a plug reach. All right, 39 miles of range. 16% state of charge. We're gonna plug in and then we'll take a look at the charge speed and see how we're doing. So quick impromptu unboxing here. This is the box it comes in. Uh, you can see Electron Vortex Plug Supercharger to CCS Adapter. It's compatible with 500 amps, 1000 volts. A Little bit of information here on, on the safety features, specifications. All right, let's open this up here. So inside we've just got some foam. So this is a very big adapter. Very heavy. There's the NAX end. There's the CCS end. Looks like it locks on both sides, which is great. Very important. So I'm going to try to make one of these cables work. Now, I don't know if this cable is going to reach. Let's see. What about this one over here? Actually, this one looks a little closer. So we're going to try to make this one work. All right. So there's actually a little button on the bottom here that needs to be pressed in order to attach it to the Tesla plug. And then now we can plug it into the car. Okay, I've got a couple options here. I can either use the Tesla app or the Kia app. So I'm gonna try the Kia app first here. Now we gotta find one Bravo open. 
I'm going to go ahead and say start charge. Let's see if this works. If not, we'll try the Tesla app. Now, in theory, we're going to start to see this charging here. Charging started. All right, we're climbing here, 81. Can we get 83? I know that's the highest I've gotten. 83 kilowatts, so there we go. We've just hit my all-time high. So there is no difference between charging on a CCS, so something like the Electrify America station or ChargePoint station, and using a Tesla supercharger, at least with the Nero EV. Now we're gonna let this run a little bit here. I wanna test, you know, is there any sort of slowdown with heat, what the charge curve looks like? Does it mimic, you know, the, the CCS charge curve? But so far, so good. Uh, the only little trick initially was there is a lock on both sides. So I was having a, an issue getting the, the NAX plug to plug into the adapter. Um, the, the release is a trigger underneath. So you have to depress the trigger underneath to get the NAX side in. And then there's a trigger on top to plug into the CCS side. So a little convoluted there, but once you figure it out, uh, no problem. So already you can see my charge speed has dropped from the peak of 83 kilowatts down to 77. Uh, that's pretty standard. Um, that first 10% uh, really uh, is the, the peak of the charge curve and then it just slowly starts dropping until it gets about 50%, then it's gonna drop again at around 80%. So all pretty standard for this vehicle. So here's a look at the adapter plugged in here. So we've got the NAX cable plugged into the adapter, which is then plugged into the CCS port on my vehicle. Um, this is what I was talking about a little earlier here. So you've got this trigger down here. That is to connect and release the NAX portion of it. And then you've got this trigger up here. That is to connect and release the CCS portion. Now, both of these are locks. So while the vehicle is charging, someone can't come and unplug it on either end, which is very good. So what a sight, huh? A non-Tesla EV that's now able to charge at almost every supercharged station, over 15,000 stations across the country. That more than doubled my um, available DC charge stations. That's huge, especially when you're making road trips, uh, you know, when you're planning a trip. Uh, the other thing is Tesla stations just tend to be more reliable. They tend to have more stalls. They tend to be working. Uh, their ease of use is, is better. So this is a huge deal. Being able to access superchargers using an adapter like this, yeah, it's critical uh, for any non-Tesla EV owner. Uh, and especially now that NAX has become the North American charge standard, you know, this is the de facto standard moving forward. Uh, manufacturers are building these ports into their vehicle. Uh, a lot of the new vehicles will only have a NAX port. CCS is gonna go by the wayside. So for anyone like me who's got a legacy EV that has a CCS port, uh, it's critical to have an adapter like this and the Electron Vortex plug, uh, it seems to be working flawlessly. Um, so for the, for the money, uh, real great, real great equipment. So as you can see, I'm the only non-Tesla EV charging here. Uh, I expect this to change quite a bit as more and more vehicles um, get access and as more and more owners realize, you know, there's an education component. Not everyone realizes they can now charge non-Tesla EVs at superchargers. And then of course, as more and more people get adapters. I expect to see these stations a lot busier and with a lot more non-Tesla EVs in the near future. Now, one thing I was mentioning before is very evident. You've got to be careful with the cable length here. As you can see, especially on these V, V3, I think this is a V3 supercharger, um, V2, V3 chargers, you just don't have a lot of cable to work with. So luckily, I have my port is on the front of the vehicle, uh, so I get to pull nose in. It's a lot easier to plug in, especially with these shorter cables. But if you've got a vehicle where your, your port charge door is maybe on the side here, a lot of them put them on the fenders, the right or left fenders. Uh, and then a lot of them put them on either the right or left quarter panels. You may not have room, especially if you have a longer vehicle, you may not have room to use the charger that you're pulled up into. So sometimes you end up having to use one that's adjacent. It could end up blocking a space. So it's just something to be aware of there, um, especially if it's a, you know, a busy charge station uh, and you're now having to straddle a line here and block two spaces. Whatever you do, definitely don't pull up sideways and block you know, three or more spaces. Um, try to be considerate because uh, you know, everyone's trying to get back on the road, uh, charge and get going. Looks like they're gonna have to update these signs here um, because they do have the Tesla vehicle charging only. We're gonna have to change that to EV vehicle charging only pretty soon. We are at 42%, 64 kilowatts. Charger is still holding, uh, the charge adapter is still working flawlessly. Uh, let's go take a, a peek here and feel the heat coming off of this thing. Just wanna make sure there's no overheating, anything like that. Cool to the touch. A little warm up here, but I think that's just the sun hitting it. Uh, here in the shade where it plugs in, it doesn't feel warm at all. This thing is cool. So I don't think this thing's overheating. I mean, we've been plugged in here for about uh, 15, 20 minutes. Um, there is no temperature whatsoever. 
like I said, a little warm up top here, but that's honestly just the sun. Everything else feels really cool. I think, uh, I think this is just a well-made piece of kit. I am really loving that the new Kia Charge Pass, which is a feature they built into the vehicle and the car to accommodate Tesla supercharging, uh, it works pretty much flawlessly. Um, everything is synced here with the Kia app, so I don't even need to use the Tesla app. Uh, I can see you know, my current charge speed, how much charge I've added, um, current cost here, start and stop the charge session. So this is great. Uh, this, you know, this really streamlines things and, and reduces clutter. It's one less app I have to have on my phone. All right, we're at 60%, still pulling 60 kilowatts. So it looks like they do offer an extended warranty on this. Uh, looks like it's got a $0 deductible. I punched in the adapter information here. So they offer a one year, two year, or a three year. Uh, that three year looks like it's the best value there. They'll give you a free replacement, no deductible. I think that that is worth it. That's something to consider here because this gets added after the one year manufacturer warranty expires. So that's a total of four years of protection. Uh, you know, for $29, I think that's a pretty good investment. Okay, as we approach 70%, we're starting to see the charge curve taper here, 45 kilowatts. Uh, again, that's pretty standard for this vehicle. The lower the battery is, the quicker it's going to charge. And then as we get closer to that 80% mark, things will slow down. And then beyond 80%, they'll really slow down. Now, one Kia specific issue I noticed is that the phone app shows Tesla supercharge stations. Um, but the built-in car navigation, and my car is fully updated, I just got the latest OTA update a month ago, uh, it does not show Tesla superchargers here. It's telling me the closest one is a, a flow charger here, and it's a level two, seven kilowatt. The problem with this is if Tesla superchargers aren't properly coded in the built-in maps, when it's winter time and I need to precondition my battery, um, the preconditioning mode only activates when a charge a DC charge station is set as na um, a destination point in the navigation and the built-in navigation. Um, so what will happen is if you're on the freeway and you set a, a DC charge station, about 30 minutes out, it will kick on the battery warmer so that by the time you get there, the battery's at the optimal temperature to, to fast charge in, in cold weather. So I really hope Kia gets on this quickly because that's a huge miss there, um, especially you know now that these Kia vehicles can charge at superchargers, they need to be properly coded in their navigation system especially if they're not gonna give you a manual toggle on and off for the uh, battery preconditioning. All right, we're one minute from 80%. We're down to 27 kilowatts. So you can see that uh, the last few percent here, it really dropped off, but that's to be expected. Now that's why they don't recommend charging above 80% on road trips unless you really need to because uh, the battery curve really drops off there. Okay, fully charged there to 80%. It just stopped charging. Um, there we go. All right, so now that we're done charging, should just be a matter of pressing this button up here. So this will unplug, well, let me unplug the Tesla first. So I'm actually gonna come down here. I'm gonna press this button down here and release the NAX adapter. So that, the whole thing just unplugged there. And now I'm going to try to get my adapter off with one hand. All right, we got that taken apart there. The NAX goes back there. Adapter feels cool to the touch. It didn't really get too warm. So that's pretty nice. Um, seems to have really done the trick here. Highly recommended, especially for the fact that these are almost half the cost of the OEM Hyundai and Kia adapters. Uh, I would say this is a, a great buy and I highly recommend. So clutch kick approved. One of the things I noticed, I had Lewis look up the um, per kilowatt pricing at the supercharger. So for Tesla vehicles, it's 48 cents per kilowatt during peak hours, 37 cents per kilowatt um, off peak hours. For non-Tesla EVs, 65 cents per kilowatt peak hours, 50 cents per kilowatt off peak hours. That's a pretty significant increase there. Uh, you know, you're talking almost 20 cents uh, difference there. Uh, so something to keep in mind, these used to be a lot closer. It looks like now that they've opened them up to um, third-party EVs, uh, they are uh, significantly more expensive. That actually puts it on par, if not higher, than Electrify America. I was kind of shocked by that. So there you have it. The Electron Vortex NAX to CCS adapter um, worked like a charm. Uh, great value, great product. Uh, I'll be using this personally here, um, especially as I run out of Electrify America free credits and have to start paying for charging. The, the Tesla is just so much more convenient. Their locations are 
are more frequent, they're in better places. I'll be using this adapter here, and if anything comes up, we'll post a follow-up review, uh, but hopefully it should be smooth sailing. Uh, thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next time on Clutch Kick. Thank you.